Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Well, back to doing these brake lines on the Model A and a few other things. Sun shining outside. Got the door open, got some fresh air coming in. If you guys remember last time I uh, did the seat and got the shifter taken care of. So, need to rework these brake lines. So there's the master cylinder. And uh, it's a dual reservoir master cylinder. I love these tops. You can tighten them down and get them not to leak. But uh, the fluid looks nice and clean in there. A little bit of dust on top floating around for me opening it. But uh, nothing too bad. So let's show you up underneath this thing again. You got those residual valves to put on. So the, the rear brake line, you can see, it's like it's been rubbing, rubbing the floor pan. So when I do redo it, I'll take this and I'll spin it and get that to come out this way. So it ain't rubbing on the floor pan no more. But the rear line is a copper nickel line. That one's a ribbon on. That's not a bad clamp there. The wiring is just zip tied to it. It goes over here. There's another clamp there. And there's a master cylinder. So that one's the rear line. It's got some corrosion on it. And the front brake lines are steel. And you can see uh, it's rubbing right here on the cross member. It's rubbing right here on the frame. So sooner or later. That's going to rub a hole in there. So there's the... It's like a phone line um, clamp for your house. And they just rivet it on there. So I'm going to replace this line too. I'm going to put that uh, residual valve in here somewhere. Then it goes to a T. That one there goes to the driver's wheel. Over here, what do they got? Oh, they got a decent clamp there, but it's pop riveted. Over here, they got a zip tie to the electrical for the headlights wiring, and then it runs underneath the frame here, and it's rubbing. So that's not very good. So we'll be uh, replacing all them. There's that filter. Boy, she's full of. Full of crud in there too. I'll be replacing that. Nice zip tie holding that. This is steel. Line. And on this side, here's these uh these battery cables. This is that switch that was going up through that hole, but now the seat's up there. And uh, so I gotta relocate this, untape this. Some wires bolted together. All zip tied to hell. Looks like this is a nail in clamp for your phone line. They must have drilled two little holes and just nailed that in there and then uh, put a zip tie on it. So I'll be fixing that. It's kind of tight under here. Got her up a little higher than last time. There's another zip tie on the fuel line. So little bit to do under here it's nice to know that uh, my new seal is not leaking transmissions full of fluid so that's good and the rear end's been sitting here over a week no fluid on the coming out of the yoke so that seals golden so I did get the, the grommet back in the Fuel line hole there. The other one's ground. And there's a bunch of zip ties. Zip tying the fuel line. Oh, that one just broke. Look at that. <laughs> zip tying the electrical lines to the fuel line. So, all this little stuff. Sorry about spinning you guys upside down and all around. Um, just needs to be taken care of. So, without making a big giant mess, which it is gonna make a mess. I'm gonna get me my, uh, 
I got like a turkey baser or, or a, like an animal big syringe and I'm gonna draw all that fluid out of there as much as I can so when I crack them lines it don't make a big mess underneath the car that brake line or that brake fluid it's nasty stuff but we'll get her taken care of got my block under there underneath my stands just in case one of them uh, who knows where them stands are made probably Korea no, hopefully not. I think they're Japan. But uh, Japan used to build good stuff. And America used to build the, the best stuff. But I don't know about these days. Alright guys. Well, I'm going to get that fluid out of there. And uh, get some brake lines busted loose. Try not to make a mess. Alright. Well, I got that brake master cylinder all drained. This is what I use. This is to uh, repair chips in your windshield. Comes with a little kit to suck the air out of the the rock chip. They work killer for this kind of stuff. But uh, I got one of the old brake lines out, the rear one, and I uh, got the rear back one made already. You can see up there, so the rubber brake line. I twisted it. It's not going to rub the floor pan no more. I put a, a special clip that holds the brake line on there. It just had a zip tie before. And this was kind of spinning around. Made it go along the frame. It's not touching the frame. Got a nice clamp there. Got a nice clamp there. Got the residual valve. And a clamp there holding it. It's away from the frame. Then it goes up and around the cross member. Into the master cylinder. So I got some of these uh, clamps here that are bigger. That I'll put on this wire loom. And get it onto the frame too, so that's not uh, hanging around. So I got all these drilled out. I got the little uh, telephone cable clamps drilled out, and the ones on the front. So I'm gonna replace this one and uh, do some more. Coming along. All right. Well, I went ahead and uh, did a whole bunch of stuff on the old coupe. Replaced the, the power wires. This was a power wire coming off the starter This black one here is a two gauge And this one went to the switch and then went to this thin one when we were teenagers I think we had bigger wire than this going to our amplifiers for our uh, car stereos <laughs> But this stuff was a bunch of junk. And there's all the brake lines. I redid them all There's the uh, water garbage that was holding everything on. So that'll be going in the trash. Slide underneath this pig. So I redid the front brake line. It goes along the master cylinder bracket to a nice little clamp to the residual valve. Another clamp goes up here to the, the T. I took it off and blew it all out. It's got a new brake line going up to the caliper. I uh, got the brake line going across the oh, across the front of the cross member. She's not rubbing anywhere. Goes up there to the rubber line. Put clamps on the, the electrical for the headlights. I dug out the blinker wires. I put a new fill filter on it. And I put those killer uh, fuel injector line clamps on there. Those ones there don't uh, shred your rubber lines. They're way better. Got the fuel line on the frame with the rubber clamps. Spin around here. The fuel line here, it did come down underneath the cross member. I took the cross member out, laced it up through the top, put the cross member back in. I got new battery. Uh, cables going to my starter the ground was just uh, bolted to the back of the bell housing and it's aluminum so I bolted it to the back of the head up there with a new clamp down this way got more clamps just like my 55 clamped into the floorboard get them away from that fuel line I cut these brackets off that were hanging down for the old uh, battery that was in there a couple more clamps for the electrical lines up here I clamped it to the body 
I got grommets. I could not find a grommet. I dug through all my stuff. So I just used a piece of uh, a water hose and then slid the power wire through the water hose, through the floor pan. But it's golden. So I got all three grommets there now. She's looking way better in here, way safer. Nothing's going to rub. This is the way it kind of should have been done in the first place. And there's my residual valve for the back. So that's killer. And I can throw all that stuff in the garbage. See these brake lines here. They look better. They did come way out here and then to that T. I moved that T. Um, I dug out my... My turn signal wires were in the harness, so that's cool. And these are double socket reflectors in there. So I'm going to, in the lower socket, I'm going to put an amber bulb, and that'll be my blinker. And then I'll have the halogens in the upper. And over here, I had a, a melted wire. It looked like it was cutting on the frame. So I, I fixed that jacket, and I replaced the wire with this one from my uh, one of my harness kits. So I'll have blinkers. I just gotta get the, the amber bulbs and wire that stuff in. So here in the back, that shut off switch used to be in front of the seat. Well, I moved the seat forward and I didn't want it in the cab. So here's that switch. I think I'm gonna make a bracket back here, something like my 55 and I can click it off and on. I got plenty of rope. For my uh, battery, these are uh, two gauge. This is I got an old uh, my, my boy does got an old old uh, stick welder, and it had some leads on it, and uh, they're like 35 feet long. So I cut 10 feet off of each one. They're still longer than hell, but uh, I'm probably never use that old welder. So I got all the clamps to solder on. Got new battery terminals. Not sure if I'm going to put the battery back here. You can see, guys, if you got a battery on metal, get yourself a plastic tray because that battery will weep. And look at this, the paint's coming off, and that's from battery acid. That's what rotted out all a bunch of cars, especially the old Volkswagen's whole floor pan will rot out. But uh, I got one of these uh, battery trays here that I might use. It will fit right up in here. I might do that, or I might put it here. I'm not sure, but... Uh, I'm going to build a bracket for this guy, and I'll put the positive to this, and make a shutoff switch somewhere around here. I'm not sure. Might uh, bolt it there. We'll see, though. I got a chunk of the two-gauge cable. I think I got to get one more in, and uh, I'll ground the engine to the frame. The body's grounded to the frame. It's got so many body bolts, and it just goes metal to to them uh to the frame where it's tapped so i'm not worried about that but yeah getting lots of done all her brakes i didn't have one leak with that flaring tool my wife came over and we bled the brakes so that was killer so nice not to have a brake fluid leak the first time out gotta love it all right guys well back on it all right well i've been working here in the trunk and uh I was going to use this battery box. It's just a boat one with a big top, and it's just too darn big to get in there. You got to get it in from uh, the inside. So, do away with that. I went down to the local O'Reilly's or AutoZone or one of them. I must have been AutoZone. I picked this tray up here. So, you just put a carriage bolt locks into there. So, I'm not sure if I'll put four. Probably two would hold it, but uh, I think I'm going to put it right there. Keep it away from them lines and away from the side. And then like it was down here, oh, I paint, repainted all this and scrubbed it out with a wire brush and uh, squirt some red oxide on there where it was bare metal. So nice and clean now. But that was from that battery acid leaking. So I, uh, I went and got a piece of mat. Non-skid uh, a mat for your... For your shop so i'm gonna bolt that down in there with the carriage bolts then i'll take some uh, permatex i think and put a little bead around there and i cut this guy to fit 
And then I'll set that in there and let her cure and that'll seal that battery acid from uh, leaking down below. And I got a, a battery hole down top and some brackets. And I got my other connectors for my ground strap. I got to build that still. So that guy will go there and I think I might put the shot off switch. Oh, and I made a bracket. Just a little L bracket and drilled it. I got to drill a couple holes there in the bottom. I put two uh, 5 16 bolts in them. And I think I'm going to put it there somewhere. So, almost got power to this old girl. Then I can see if the, the lights work and stuff too. I believe the, the brake lights work. I think the brake lights uh, stayed on. I need to adjust that switch down on the master cylinder. But, I'll do that later and... Uh, I'm going to get on building this, drill them holes and bolt this guy down and uh, see if I can get a battery in this old girl. Alright. Well, you know me. Another little change of plan. So instead of using those uh, those carriage bolts, I just put uh, 5 16 grade 8 bolts in there. Yeah, way better. I don't want to put no uh, carriage bolts in there for wood. So... That's bomb proof. So I'm going to put some of this uh, gasket maker, fuel resistant, oil resistant, uh, Permatex around here and around here. And then uh, put this mat on there. Put something heavy on it and let it cure. And that'll be golden. All right. Always change it up. Nitro. Gotta love it. So, I got the battery all wired. Got my uh, shut off switch there. So that'll be off. That'll be on. Straight line with the car is always on. I got a battery hold down kit. That'll work with this uh, tray. Got my negative, positive. I left them long, so if I get a different battery, I can swap them either side. Plenty of uh, length to come around this way. And the positive over here. Positive is the first one this way. Comes out of the floor pan. But yep. Pretty cool. She's all nice and clean in here. Need to get me a deck lid. Hopefully I can get the one. But uh, I guess I'm going to throw the battery in it. See if she cranks up. Or cranks over. Not crank up. Hopefully don't crank up. <laughs> I need to change the oil in it and uh, I need to build that uh, ground strap for the engine. I need to fix the throttle cable still. And I need to um, put a clamp on the end of the steering column to the firewall. She's a little jiggly. There's no clamp, it just goes through the firewall there underneath those wires. So uh, I'm going to make one and put it on the inside. I need to wire the headlights. I got to get that kit from Speedway, see if the headlights work. But I'll put the battery in and see if she turns over. And maybe I got some brake lights. There's another switch in there too. I'm not sure what um, what it is. Well, I'll check it out. Maybe I got tail lights too. Hopefully. All right. Let's get that battery in there. All right. I got that battery all uh, bolted down in there. This little strap worked pretty good. It's a rubber one. Got close to uh, my fuel tank there, but uh, she's pretty stout. She ain't going to rub. I threw the switch, so that's on. No bursting uh, smoke balls anywhere or flames. So I pull the tail lights on. See the gauge lights up there, just the Speedo. These don't have bulbs in them. They're, uh, they have those um, slits in the side of them for a gauge panel. But uh, see back there in that ice box. I got tail lights. I got brake lights. So that's cool. The blinkers ain't going to blink because uh, I don't have the front blinkers uh, hooked up. Or even built yet but uh, I did find the blinkers tucked in the frame here and the browns uh, the marker light the running light and then the, the yellow is blinker 
And I'm not sure which one's high beam or low beam. Probably the black. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out when I get some bulbs. I did fix that one wire here. I got a running light. And this would be blinker, the blue one. And these two are uh, headlight. And that was a ground that they riveted back on the back of the headlight mount. But yeah, it seems to be okay. Everything's fine. She cranks over. Battery's a little tired, but she cranks. Not sure. Oh, I found out what this switch is. This must have been for a electric fan. Got a mechanical fan on there because I found this wire here uh, tucked in the frame and it's a pretty stout one. And I traced it from the switch and it's a blue wire. So that's electric fan. The horn don't work. I'll have to figure out why the horn don't work. But yeah, she's coming along. A bunch more uh, knocked off the list. So, I gotta stay on it. It's raining this weekend, so I wouldn't have been able to drive it anyway, but uh, it's getting real close. Gotta change the oil still, fix the throttle, cable, wire them headlights, get them blinkers wired up, and uh, there's a couple other things I gotta do. But yep, she's coming, coming along pretty good. I can't wait to drive this old hot rod. Sure is gonna be cool. I need some license plate lights. The old sheriff will bust you for no license plate lights. I had some on my old international truck that uh, they held on the light and they had little tiny LEDs in there. Those are the cool ones. So I might look for something or maybe an old vintage one here on the top. But yep, can't wait to drive it. Can't wait to work on this old GMC again. I got to clean up this darn mess I got everywhere. And Bill, I got to build the engine uh, ground strap out of one of those. I'll solder it up. I got my ends ready to go. So she's getting close. I'm getting stoked more and more. Take her out for a spin. I got to get some plug wires. Get rid of these uh, faded red ones. Turn them over to red. And this way they're kind of pinkish. That ain't very good. All right, guys. Well... I appreciate you watching. You guys take care out there. We'll see you next time.